Hi, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Hescox back talking to you about beginning and unifying principles of life science. Uh, yesterday, we talked about characteristics of life and the needs of life. Your warm up question of the day What are characteristics of life? Characteristics of life should have been all life is organized into cells, all life can reproduce, all life can respond to stimuli. And all living things can grow and develop. Hopefully you got all those right. So let's talk about how organisms meet their needs. Uh, if we have time, we'll get into the science stuff there. But uh, I want you to talk about a paragraph on how organisms meet their needs by an adaptation. First off, let's review. Each one of these pictures has something to do with a need of life. Take a second now, hit pause, and try and match up the needs of life with each of these pictures. All right, let's start with the lions. Those are lion cubs. So that has to be the characteristic of life, reproduction. This picture here is the bacteria that's in your intestines. Those are cells. So that is also a characteristic. Here in this picture, we have wolves chasing this elk. I'm sure those wolves are hungry and they're chasing that elk. So the wolves being hungry is the stimulus. The elk running away is the response. So that is stimulus and response. What about this picture? Is it a need or is it a characteristic? That's water. It's a need of life. Here we have a bean seed growing. That is grow and develop. Here's sunlight. Well, that must be energy. And finally, you have a pond in the forest. And that has to be living space. How do organisms meet their needs? Organisms meet their needs through interactions. The word interaction literally means to act upon another. Well, to act upon something, you must come in contact with it, usually in your environment. The environment is all of the living and non-living things that surround an organism. That could be water, which is non-living, soil, non-living, trees, which are living. It could be as things like sunlight and temperature can also be parts of the environment. The interaction is the occurrence when two or more things have to interact. It can be grass being eaten by a rabbit. It can be rabbits being eaten by foxes. Or it could be as much as the temperature change causing the leaves to fall off the trees. Those are interactions in the environment. The types and numbers of living things change over time. The more types of species in an area, the greater its biodiversity. Bio means life, diversity means variety. A species is a group of closely related organisms that can reproduce. Ants and flies are both insects, but they're not the same species, therefore they cannot reproduce. Over time, new species have adapted and evolved from old species. And sometimes species have completely died off or went extinct, like woolly mammoths and dinosaurs. The more adaptations you have, the better chances of not going extinct. An adaptation is some type of characteristic to an organism that helps it survive in its environment. We humans have opposable thumbs. We can grab stuff with our hands. Other organisms, it could be claws. It could be their fur. You know, lots of people love to talk the adaptations of the polar bear, you know, the white fur, the black skin, the great sense of smell, the, the large coat of fat that helps keep them warm. Adaptations over time lead to a species evolving. On this picture, you'll see many different types of species from a fly to a hawk to a snail to a caribou. I want you to pick some of these organisms and make a post in Google Classroom with as many characteristics that are adaptations as you can. Be sure to list the organism you're talking about and make sure that you are telling me it's adaptations.